Even though the American dream has always been to own your own home free and clear, the senior American dream should be to get rid of that home, especially now. By the time you finish watching this, you'll understand and agree, I think, that there are five ways you're better off financially if you sell your home, invest the proceeds, and rent a place to live instead. And make sure to stick around to the end. That's where I'll talk about how, if you sell your home and rent instead, you can take simple steps to ensure that rent increases over the years ahead won't drive you out of your rental. I'll start by reminding you that this is a general conversation and you should speak with your own financial advisor before making any financial decisions or investment decisions. With that out of the way, let's dive in. The first reason you're better off to rent than to own is because it costs you a lot more to own property than you think. Sure, there are taxes and insurance and the mortgage, of course, but have you ever stopped to calculate what it really costs you for maintenance and repairs every year? According to thebalancemoney.com, it costs owners about 1% of their property value to repair and maintain their property every year. So for example, if your property is worth about 500,000, it costs you about $5,000 a year just to keep it up. On top of that, you have to worry about the roof, the siding, paint, water, heater, plumbing, flooring, remodeling, etc. The list is endless. Can you think of other ways you'd prefer to spend that $5,000 plus every year? I know I can and do. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Let's say you have a $300,000 mortgage on your property. How much interest are you paying every year on that debt? This is also a cost of owning your home. For example, if your mortgage interest is 4%, 4% of $300,000 is $12,000 a year. That's what you're sending to the bank every year rather than spend, spend it enjoying it yourself. Now, whether or not you have a mortgage you also have to consider the cost of keeping your equity tied up in your home. Here's what I mean. Let's say in the example above, your property is worth 500,000 and you owe 300,000 to the bank. Your equity is 200,000. Now, most Americans think that home equity is good, but it isn't. It's the only asset that you own that earns zero. If you invested that 200,000 in the treasury bills, you could earn 5% as of the time I'm recording this. So 5% of 200,000 is $10,000. That's an additional $10,000 that you could have in your pocket if only that 200,000 wasn't invested in the walls you're looking at right now. As you're probably starting to see, once you add up all the costs, the price of owning your home starts to get really expensive. Let's continue. Let's move on to the second reason it makes sense to rent rather than own. Rent is cheap compared to owning property. Now that you've calculated the total cost of owning your home, you can compare that to what it would cost you to rent a similar property. Depending on the area you live in, you'll probably find that it's far cheaper to rent. According to nerdwallet.com, it costs on average 54% more to own a home than to rent one. In some places, the cost can exceed 93% more. Now, obviously, you have to investigate and do your homework to compare the costs in your market. But that means for every dollar you spend on rent, you fray up a half a dollar to live on and enjoy. In other words, if you can rent a home comparable to the one you own for, let's say, $3,500 a month, it's actually costing you at least $5,200 a month to own the home, all in. And by renting, you save that extra $1,700 every month, which you could use to enjoy a better fund retirement. The next reason you may want to rent rather than own is because renting gives you a lot more flexibility. You can move easily, scale up, scale down, change to a different state or climate, or even change to a different country. By renting, you have all the options and you're not tied down. Of course, because you aren't tied down to a physical location and because you have more disposable income every month, you can travel and 
You can do things that you otherwise may not have been able to afford to do, like dine out more often, spend more on your hobbies, anything, you name it. Even if these things aren't that appealing to you, you might be interested in providing more support for your children or even help them buy a house of their own. By unleashing the equity in your home, you have all these options. And, and you also have the capital and the cash flow to do it. As a homeowner, you know there are always things to fix and bills to pay, but how would you feel instead of having to worry about broken pipes and faucets, you could just call your landlord and have them worry about it for you? I can tell you from firsthand experience, it feels pretty good. It's true that owning your own home provides a feeling of security. When you rent, you might have to vacate should the owner have a change of mind. And while moving may sound like a hassle, it's really not that bad. You pay a mover, they come over, they pack you up, they move you, they unpack you. And all you have to worry about is how to connect your Netflix to your TV at the new location. But, but keep in mind that property owners want their tenant to stay. The longer, the better from their standpoint. And even if you do have to move, it's really not the end of the world. Also, when you become a renter, you give up the tax benefits and potential appreciation of owning property. That's true. But as a retired senior, the tax benefits may not be as valuable as they used to be. Why? Because your income is lower and your income taxes may be much smaller in retirement. And as far as appreciation goes, that's something your kids are more interested in than you. What's primarily important to you is cash flow and flexibility. And you get plenty of both of those by selling your home and becoming a renter. Now let's talk about your big worry, rent inflation. You might be interested in becoming a senior renter, but you're afraid that if you start renting, the rent will increase over the years and sooner or later, you won't be able to come up with the rent. It's a valid concern, but one that is easily taken care of. First of all, let's get some perspective. Over the last couple of years, rent soared maybe 20% or more in many areas. That was largely caused by the COVID crisis. Now that crisis is subsiding and workers are going back to the office, students are going back to classrooms, and the demand for extra or larger living spaces is declining. We can see evidence of that when we look at headlines like these. Still, inflation is something to think about. If you look at the facts, rent went up on average 4.16% per year from 1954 through 2023, as you can see by this research. So even at only 4.16%, rent will double in about 18 years. So how do you deal with that? the same way you deal with inflation for everything else in your life, by inflation proofing your retirement income. What do I mean by that? I mean, create income that grows as inflation grows. Social Security is a great example of what I'm talking about because Social Security checks adjust every year for inflation. And as a matter of fact, if your Social Security check can cover your rent, you've got it made because as rent goes up, so will your social security. Other ways to grow your income are to own investments that grow over time and therefore create more income, like for example, conservative growth mutual funds. Now we've discussed this many times before, so make sure to subscribe so you, know, you can have access to those, those videos. And when you sell your home, you free up capital so you can invest that money to create more income. It's true that in any one year, those funds might go up or down. But over the long run, this has been a great way to create a growing retirement income. Of course, the past is no guarantee of the future. Make sure to talk to your own financial advisor before making an investment decision. And also make sure to subscribe because we're gonna release a video on this specific idea, which is how to inflation-proof your retirement income. So subscribe and also hit that little bell so that you're informed when that new video comes out. And remember, 
Inflation hits homeowners just as much, if not more, than renters. Repairs and maintenance go up with inflation, for example, right? Remember I asked you at the start of this video to figure out everything it cost you to own your home? Go back over that list and add up those things that rise with inflation. Actually, as a renter, you're more easily equipped to deal with inflation because if prices do get out of hand, it's easy to move to a less expensive area or to downsize. What happens to some senior homeowners is as upkeep gets more and more expensive, they simply don't do the maintenance. And then they have to live in a home that's falling apart. Then of course, when that happens, the home declines in value and they're stuck. But if you sell you know, at relatively high prices and when your home is in tip top shape, you avoid that risk. I'll admit that selling your home and becoming a renter isn't for everyone, and I don't suggest that everyone do it. That's why I always say, speak with your own advisor before making any decisions. If the rent in your particular area is very high relative to your income, and you have very limited income sources, even after you sell your existing home and invest that money to create more income, maybe it's not a good move for you. If your social security check won't cover the rent and or you don't have other income sources that rise with inflation, again, it may not be the smart way to go. But for seniors who do have sufficient income to pay the rent and want more cash flow and they want greater flexibility, this could be a great move. Are you convinced that this is the way to go? Why or why not? Leave me a comment in the comments below and I answer all the questions and comments and I look forward to it. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel in order to get more out of the box ideas on securing your retirement future. And also be sure to look in the description below to, to this video. You'll see a link to join our Facebook group. There, you can interact with other people who are interested in the same things that you are, which is basically retirement issues. And also, we have links to our free booklets on 10 different retirement topics.